European Conservatives. Mr Howell, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, this paper deals with a situation which is actually not very common. It, it gives the example of three members uh, who have had derogations in force, Ukraine, France and Turkey, although France has now withdrawn from this. It's envisaged by the Convention that states would be able to derogate in certain circumstances, as we've heard, mainly war and public emergencies. When one looks at the three examples, the countries have been faced with major problems. I don't think we should underestimate the scale and horror of the terrorist threats facing France and the unpredictable challenges. Similarly, it's difficult to imagine the extent of the problems faced by the Russian invasion of parts of Ukraine, or indeed in the case of Turkey, in slightly different circumstances, the implications of the failed coup. These are very serious circumstances, and one of the things we must try to assess as the guardians of human rights in Europe is whether the measures used are proportionate. And I think that this is the key test. It is perfectly proper that we should look at this as a council. And I do think we should take a strong and robust view to human rights here uh, with uh, this in mind. The risks are that if we do not do this, we make the situation worse and are no better than those who seek to use the situation to cause problems. But whatever the advice being given by this Council and its, security, and its Secretary General, the decision to use a derogation must remain with the state. What we are talking about here is achieving that balance between the rights of the state and the rights of the supranational body such as this uh, to be able to take, uh, to take action. And, and I'm sure that, we, that, 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 that with that in mind, um, we, we must be very careful and that the countries are very careful um, and we should ensure that the Secretary General does not have any veto on a state undertaking a derogation. After all, a derogation does not mean that the circumstances fall outside the ECHR or that the Convention does not apply, although it may affect the extent of the state's obligations. Uh, and I, I think that rather than this role, as the report suggests, falling to the, falling to the Secretary General, we should think of using a, an individual judge from the, from, the, from the Court of Human Rights. That judge may not be able to sit again uh, in, uh, in any subsequent action, but I do think that we should use the expertise that they have. The report recommends a multi-level strategic response but I would prefer this to be in the context of having selected a judge to do that and to be able to use the expertise that they have. Thank you, Mr. Will. The next speaker.